Hello, you are watching News 9 Live. Uh, rains, rains, go away is more like it each time it pours in Bengaluru. Once called the garden city or retirement paradise, Bangaloreans would pride themselves for the weather in comparison to other states in South India. For instance, anyone living in Bangalore, when looking at Chennai, will say, what kind of weather do you have? Hot, hotter, hottest. So they were very proud. But the day before, two unfortunate deaths occurred in Bengaluru. 22-year-old Banurekha drowned in her car which was caught in the swirling waters on KR Nagar underpass and then 27-year-old Lokesh who fell into a storm water drain at KP Agrahara. Of course, the right noises were made, no doubt. But the BBMP which had promised to clear out roads and diesel them were super busy, you see, and hence the mess in Bengaluru. You want to know the reason? The recently concluded elections in Karnataka kept nearly 50% of BBMP officials very busy during elections. They were doing their duty and the result is of course here for everyone to see. Now the officials threw up their hands, gave several excuses and complained about several issues. But the fact of the matter is that they were unprepared to handle the monsoon. Let's try and unravel this recurring menace all the time. You see this year after year in Bengaluru, inundated roads, water logging and those killer potholes. Joining us, there are several guests. Mohammad Vajula, of course, is my colleague. Also joining is Sandeep Aniruddin, who's convener for Citizens Agenda for Bengaluru and Shrikant Narasimhan, who's founder of BNP. Shrikant, I want to come to you first, Shrikant. I know that they were doing their duties. Who? The BBMP officials. They said nearly 45 to 50 percent of us were busy elsewhere. Why? Because the elections were being conducted. But handling Bengaluru rains is a new phenomenon. This is what I am asking you and I am asking several others and on behalf of all the Bengalurians. It's not like it's happened yesterday. Do Bengalurians deserve this? Two deaths, Banu Rekha and Lokesh. I mean, you could be busy everywhere, but this is clearly dereliction of duty. Absolutely, Sudha. I think you used the word dereliction of duty, and that's absolutely the right term to use. Uh, pothole deaths, storm water drain deaths, underpass deaths. Unfortunately, these are all not new incidents or new accidents to Bengaluru. The unfortunate reality is I don't think these are going to be the last as well, and it pains me to say this. Last two to three months, no ward committee meetings have been held, no issues have been taken up, and the common answer or the consistent answer we've been getting from the nodal officers, from the assistant engineers, we are all busy in election duty. This is the state of affairs in Bengaluru where one election completely throws the city into uh, a state of complete, uh, I would say, lack of activity whatsoever. The reality is the BBMP elections have not been held for more than two and a half years. If those elections had been held and if they had elected corporators, at least there is somebody who would have been working and would have been answerable. Today, we have nobody who is answerable and accountable. I have my views on who should be held accountable and who is answerable. But I totally share this pain that you have just talked about. And it feels extremely painful to keep talking about death after death after death. Absolutely. And you know, what we are asking you is what you can see behind you. Bengaluru unprepared for the monsoon. And I think the BBMP, I'm not trying to apportion blame here. I mean, we are nobody to do that. But as part of Bengaluru, as someone who cares for the people of Bengaluru, I can say this. The BBMP is erratic. They make plans. They discard those plans. And today, those two deaths particularly have happened because they were totally caught unawares because it came early. Monsoons have not even hit Bengaluru is what I will ask Vajiullah, of course, my colleague. But let me tell you, if this is the situation, you know, in the initial days when the rain came down, what is it going to be later? It's going to be like most Bengalurians say, havoc. Vajiullah, I'm coming to you. Vajiullah, we all saw how Banu Rekha, you know, all of 22-year-old, an employee, a techie with Infosys lost her life what a waste of life it was. But what about Lokesh? Apparently, he was peering into 
uh, storm water drain and he fell. Well, I just visited the spot where uh, Lokesh uh, died and uh, when I spoke to the locals over there, what they told me was uh, uh, that uh, the storm water drains over there are working pretty much really, uh, pretty much well. Uh, but on that particular day, it had rained so much that it was up to the brim. And people had even warned the Lokesh uh, not to go near it. But he went there to check uh, how much water was there. And he slipped because there was no barricading that was placed at this particular area. So, and he slipped because of uh, uh, the rain or the wet uh, land that was over there. And uh, he fell into the storm water drain. And his body was recovered five kilometers away from where he fell. And uh, the BBMP officials have also put the onus on uh, Lokesh itself that it was uh, his own doing that has caused his death uh, and that they were prepared. It. But if you see these visuals itself, this clearly gives you an idea that this particular stretch of that stormwater lake is something which was not covered, uh, while the other parts of the stormwater drain where I had went to were covered. And the people over there also clearly told me that during the rains, they have a very bad time because the water Despite it being so deep, the water still comes up to uh, their houses, it enters their, because it's a low-lying area, and it enters their houses, and they have a lot of problems in that area. We also spoke to the commissioner a few, uh, a few hours ago, and uh, a few minutes ago, and you'll also get uh, that particular uh, sound bite that we've had with the commissioner. He clearly tells that uh, these, both these deaths uh, are tragic, but you cannot completely blame the BBMP for it. They have com they've done a lot of work is what uh, uh, the commissioner is saying. And this time around, compared to last time, uh, uh, the problem that we saw, the visuals that we saw, were, uh, very much less. There were only 20 to 15 houses, is what he said, uh, were under water. And uh, it was just a few areas that we saw water. Uh, they're stranded for 45 minutes, but it wasn't right. more than that. But we should remind the commissioner that it was pre-monsoon. And what I really worry, Sudha, is the coming monsoon, which is just a few days, a few weeks away. What will happen to Bengaluru then? Are we really prepared? Because the visuals that we saw last year is something that Bengaluru hasn't forgotten. Now remains to be seen how uh, well aware the BBMP is or how well prepared they are to tackle them. Right, and I think it should be a citizen's initiative. Uh, we're doing this story because we care about Bengaluru. Please post your comments. Ask us enough questions so that we can answer. We have experts sitting right here. Let me go to Sandeep Aniruddhan. Sandeep, look at this. First, Siddharamaya comes out and he says, you know, he says that actually the driver of Banureka should not have gone, uh, you know, below the underpass. Then what Vajiullah, my colleague, just now said, that the BBMP commissioner also said that, you know, why did Lokesh really, you know, peer, he should not have done it. Then also added, very few, you know, uh, uh, damage, very less damage has been done. What is this but trying to hide all the shortcomings instead of focusing on what they are supposed to do, that is BBMP. I am saying it again and again that this clearly smacks of dereliction of duty Sandeep Aniruddhan. Don't you think? Year after year, they are given 350 crores, they said make it flood proof, they don't do anything. The High Court comes, you know, very, very strongly on them and says, come on, get your act together. They are sitting there. I mean, how long will this go on? Sudha, uh, basically, if you look at it, the city administration is full of flaws. And uh, I think we've had a culture of... Uh, inefficiency, a culture of uh, lawlessness uh, to uh, uproot uh, uh, this culture and to uh, reform it, we need to have a systemic addressal. For instance, uh, the ward committees uh, also are meant to have a ward level disaster committee. Every ward is supposed to have a disaster committee. In fact, during COVID, there were a lot of steps to make this actionable and it was operational also. So I don't know why those board level disaster committees are not working now. And if it's not working, it uh, the buck stops at the commissioner. The commissioner is meant to ensure that these systems are right. in place. Secondly, uh, look at that Raja Kalwe thing. You know, traditionally Raja Kalwe's stormwater drains, uh, the visuals which you showed us, they're not even uh, more than one meter or two meter wide, right? Mm. 
it will shock you to know that these rajakalves originally were anywhere between 20 to 30 meters wide or wow. up to 50 meters wide so th these were basically uh, like rivers hmm. now how will a rajakalve uh, which was originally maybe 20 or 30 meters wide how will that amount of water travel within one meter or two meters doesn't that defy logic right so the encroachment, because the value of land has increased so much in Bengaluru over the last many decades, hmm. on both sides of Rajakalwe, encroachments have meant that they got reduced and narrowed down to half a meter, one meter. <clears throat> the Rajakalwe itself is encroached. To top it, under laws, both sides of the Rajakalwe, you have another 20 meter, 30 meter, 50 meter buffer zone, right. which is also meant to be a no development zone. Huh. So the actual encroachment is anywhere between 100 to 150 meters on each of these Rajakal Can you imagine? Look at, I mean, yeah. did you hear that statistic from Sandeep Aniruddhan? It is shocking, Sandeep. Correct. So this is how our city, and and I'm only getting started on Rajakalways and its buffer zones. The lakes, and the lakes are buffer zones of 30 meters all around right. it. Then we have wetlands, you have marshlands, you have floodplains. I think anywhere close to 20 to 30 percent of 30 percent of Bengaluru might have been wetland. Hmm. We have lost 90 to 95 percent of it due to encroachment by government and by private parties. If you go on any of the main Rajakalways even today, right. you will right. find trucks dumping soil on it to encroach it and then convert it. You know, Sandeep, uh, it sounds pretty much like the same story in Mumbai and Chennai also. The last time That's Chennai drowned, <laughs> this is what was the story. I mean, this kind of brazen building, you know, high rises and let me tell you, some of the most educated and so-called enlightened groups are also equally guilty. First, the, like the IT, it's called the IT hub, what? Bengaluru. But let me, I am told that the IT is supposed to be one of the biggest, they are somebody who come, who build, of course, they give employment, but not at the cost of playing around with nature. Would you agree, Sandeep Paniruddhan, that they are equally yeah, guilty? The worst offenders, people would be inclined to say, are the IT uh, hub and IT companies and real estate. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. But I would bring in <clears throat> a nuance there. The first violators, and in fact, one of the largest violators, has been the state government itself. Right. See, Bengaluru had about 2,000 lakes. Today it gets, it stands reduced to 400. Yeah, I'm years. going to come back to you, Sandeep, because that's a very yeah. important conversation and you always highlight that unless you respect what we had, you're going to regret today as well as tomorrow. Let me uh, bring back uh, yet another guest, Shrikan Narasimhan, who's the founder of BNP. Shrikan Narasimhan, you know, you're a founder of BNP, which is an outfit, I will not call it a political party, correct me if I am wrong, but an outfit which is there for the betterment of the people of Bengaluru. Am I right, Srikant Narasimhan? Uh, so, Sudha, we are an outfit, but we are also a political party, but focused only on the BBMP and our uh, citizens are going to contest only in the BBMP elections. We right. will participate in the MLA elections. Right. So, focus so, only on Bengaluru and BBMP. Right. So, therefore, I, did, I said that you are not the traditional political party and that is another conversation because I have spoken to you several times and there seems to be welfare yes. at the heart of what you are planning to do. Look at, look, look at all this, BBMP, they are asked like for instance, you know what Vajula, my colleague was saying, BBMP said, listen, we were supposed to, you know, kind of work on 209 locations, but we could only resolve 84 locations. Then they said, what can we do if trees fall on the ground? What can we do if, you know, uh, so many, so much of leaves, they kind of block uh, all the pathways or all the sewage, all the canals, it, this is very vulnerable. Also, contractors have not been paid in time. Look at the litany of complaints as it were. So, yeah. is uh, Banureka and Lokesh, uh, are they supposed to be answerable for all these things is what I am asking you, Shrikan Narasimhan. There seems to be some rot which has set in because nothing seems to be working. And also, the allied departments of the BBMP. They also seem to be, you know, very lackadaisical about the entire thing. No, absolutely, uh, Sudha. Uh, I don't even know where to start and where to end uh, when it comes to misgovernance in BBMP. Let's go back a few months. Hmm. Flooding is not an issue that's new to Bengaluru, hmm. right? All the encroachments and all of that have already happened, as Sandeep said, 
but we are in the reality right now. Seven, eight months back, we all know that major flooding that happened in Bengaluru. Immediately as a response to that, the state government announced, believe it or not, 1,200 crores worth of storm water drain project. Hmm. Just for Bengaluru and focused on these few problematic areas. Right. Now, my question is, does anybody have even one person clue on what's happening on these projects? Hmm. I and my team, we have personally visited some of the projects. Most of them are non-starters. And the, some of them that have started have gotten stuck halfway in between. And we are nine months after that flooding incident happened. Who is to be held accountable? Absolutely no idea. Hmm. If you talk to BJP now, they will say, oh, we are no longer in power. And if you talk to Congress, they will say, you know, earlier it was the failure of BJP. But I can tell you, one year down the line, it's going to be the same thing. So I think one of the fundamental things that we need to do, irrespective of who's in power or who's not, we need to demand two things, transparency and accountability. I want transparency on the 1,200 crores worth of projects that have happened. What is the status? Has work started? Who are the contractors? Where does it stand? That itself can solve half the problems if the drains are properly maintained. Second, uh, it's a very fundamental thing that's happened right now. Right. Uh, Mr. Sidra Meha, you know what he has said? He has asked the uh, chief commissioner and the chief engineer to look at it. But are they the ones who are going to be held accountable for anything mm. that happens in the future? If that is the case, let an FIR be filed against them. It's not. Where is local administration and BVMP? Ward level. Sandeep talked about ward level disaster management committees. Where are they? Not a single disaster management committee has been constituted. We right. need accountability at that level. So these are the two things that need to be fixed immediately. Transparency right. in all the projects that get approved and yeah. accountability to be clearly pegged at every level at the local administration. But Shrika Narasimhan, all this sounds very idealistic when they can't even fix a single road. I mean, you are, you are wanting a Taj Mahal to be built, whereas they can't even build a tenement as of now. You know, you brought in politics and I think it's a very good time to go to Vajula, who is of course, you know, a, a journalist and considering that, you know, he has a firm eye on the politics of Karnataka, I'm going to go to Vajula and ask this question. Vajula, you know, till that I think we've lost the connection to Vajula, we'll bring Vajula back in a bit. But uh, let me go to, uh, uh, let me go to um, Anirudh. Anirudh, uh, Sandeepan Anirudh. Sandeepan, the point is that, you know, politics is very important here. I'll tell you why. You know, BJP to a large extent kept battling this, you know, this 40 percent Sarkara is there, of course. But overall, this rot which had set in to Bengaluru, year after year, potholes, one young girl, Scooty went inside, one old man died while walking, so on and so forth. There was also a case of a pregnant woman who got caught, of course, it was fortunate that, you know, she was saved and thank God for small mercies. Several such cases have been there. But it seemed that the BJP, the needle just did not move. It just did not move. And today, when you go and ask them, they said, but what are you talking about? Look at who voted for who. BJP was voted in in Bengaluru. So what are you talking about? We did a lot for Bengaluru. Don't you think somewhere, you know, when people vote, they also keep these things into consideration. Bengaluru, the BJP never delivered, but then Bengaluru, they win. So, do you think these, you know, this kind of sends out a wrong message as well? Sudha, so <clears throat> when it comes to politics, there are a couple of uh, difficult issues. One is, uh, <clears throat> the BJP did a wonderful thing in 2018. They issued a Bengaluru specific manifesto. It had 150 points. Hmm. And everything that they were demanding in terms of systemic change, implementation of uh, 74th Amendment, uh, the water uh, drainage management, uh, flood management, all of these were there in that manifesto. It was a fantastic manifesto they issued. I think in the history of elections in Karnataka, no party had issued a wonderful manifesto like that. And it was, there, there's a reason why it was a good manifesto. They consulted civic society. So, before BJP came to uh, power, they did a fantastic job of consulting civic uh, uh, population, uh, citizens of Bengaluru. Therefore, they had a wonderful manifesto. But they were not elected in, they didn't have a majority. The mistake they made is they bought out MLAs from Congress 
they indulged in corruption to come to power and from there it had been downhill because after that they could not govern they were busy trying to make money for whatever money that invested in buying out those politicians probably so basically there was only corruption and lack of governance and their entire manifesto of 150 points stands as a failure not one of them did they accomplish in fact some of the manifesto points are fantastic they said they going to have a complete drainage map revival of uh, uh, bengaluru uh, they were planning to have a wetland uh, management uh, body uh, and so on and so on now the problem is how how did a lot of these mlas get reelected in bengaluru when they have done zero delivery in fact anti incumbency was extremely high in bengaluru right everybody was aware that bjp is not popular now there are a couple of things these might sound controversial if you remember there was a voter id scam yes and the congress has gone on record claiming that at least uh, every constituency has 20000 to 40000 uh, hmm. fake votes hmm. now now is the time when congress should come true on there if they have evidence on that account they should go to the election commission get many of those uh, results uh, cancelled why haven't they done it because they claim they had evidence they gone home to home they found there were two or three extra uh, fake votes so you're saying family. they are all in it together is that what you're saying that politicians act you know they're like i mean it's not as if someone will take it up unless it's politically very very fruitful or yields results vajiullah is back with me my colleague vajiullah i want to ask you you know while we were trying to fix your uh, network issues the thing is that look at it this is a conundrum it's very strange huh this bengaluru problem rain problem has been going on forever i think you know one has done at least 25 stories on this every year it's the same story only faces change sorry to sound like this but it's the cruel naked truth as it were but then in bengaluru there were so many issues but the bjp wins so if there is no kind of kind of accountability which is associated with politicians then they will be like this only no vajiullah Well, I think politics doesn't answer the questions that, uh, that the people of Bengaluru face or the problems that people of Bengaluru face. Uh, if we see both their manifestos, both their manifestos were strongly concentrated on how they will woo the Lingayats, how they will woo the Vokkalikas, how they will woo the Ahinda vote bank. Everybody tried to cater to a particular vote bank rather than an issue-based politics. We also saw before the elections how. Uh, the issues were more like bajrang dal hijab alal azan wazan all these things were a part of the issue we still haven't come to a place where we can sit and discuss on issues like why don't we have proper roads if you remember 8 uh, 8 eight or 10 years back when we had elections uh, the issues were potholes we at newsland had done an entire story a series on road to hell it was called uh, and i remember going and measuring how uh, deep these potholes are Today, when I come back after 10 years and I see how the city is, you still find those potholes at the same very spot. So <coughs> things like these have never changed, and I don't think the politics of Karnataka will ever be able to change this. The uh, the uh, the the only political body or the only body that is supposed to do that, they are not having their elections. That has taken two and a half years. So if you don't have those people who are accountable for the civic issues, if they are not elected properly. that body is not concentrated body then you can't expect the city to be clean and uh, though the present regime uh, the congress government which has just come to power has said that in the next 6 to 8 months we will have an election in bbmp we will sort that issue out but then again the entire delimitation issue there are a lot of pending issues that's what happens if you don't have election for two and a half years issues after issue issues after issues keep piling up by the time you finish those issues you have more issues that are waiting So right now, politically, or the or the, if you see the civic uh, sense of it, we are not concentrated on civic issues. We but Vaji, this delimit. But Vaji, this delimitation exercise, it's been going on and on. It's in public, you know, kind of discourse for years now. What is stopping them to kind of get on with the delimitation exercise and see to it that the BB and uh, MP elections happen so that I. as a citizen of bengaluru if there are potholes in front of my house can go and get a hearing at least i say otherwise i live in anarchy banana republic as it were 
let us what we have understood from uh, this issue is that it's hold up at a very legal end of it. Uh, you have uh, the BBP saying that uh, it, there should be delimitation at look. I think we've lost connection to Vajiullah. He'll be back. We'll get get him back. And let me now go to Srikant uh, Narasimhan uh, to speak more on this. Srikant, would you like to add to this? The BBMP elections uh, have not happened for two and a half years, and everybody has been waiting for them to happen. According to my colleague Vajiullah, it is some legal wrangle. It's caught up in legal wrangle. What the delimitation? Otherwise, it would have happened. But then. This is, you know, we are going round and round the mulberry bush because unless we have BBMP, we are all going to lose people, we are going to break our legs, but nothing will happen about it. So, the, my own view is that delimitation is just a red herring, it is just a ruse. If they wanted to do a proper delimitation, they could have done it long back. Hmm. It is just a red herring, it is a ruse to delay the elections. If they delay the elections, today it is directly under the control of the state government, the MLAs run riot. It is a 10,000 crore budget and a spend that happens every year. Let us not forget that. And as far as the MLAs are concerned, uh, earlier it was the BJP MLAs, now uh, it is the turn of the Congress MLAs. I do not think any of them have any interest in conducting the BBMP elections because if they are conducted and if there is an elected body in place and if there are elected corporators, they do not have the full and unfettered access to the 10,000 crores. Hmm. And hence, I don't see any incentive on their part to con conduct these elections. Uh, we are also going the legal way, uh, we are fighting the battles in the Supreme Court and so on. So we are hopeful of finding the solution there. I don't think we can expect anything from the political class. But uh, Vajula was absolutely right. The fundamental reason why there is so much of misgovernance that's happening in Bengaluru is the lack of an elected government. There's absolutely no focus on civic issues. There's absolutely no focus on municipal governance. There are no elected representatives at the city level who can be answerable or who can be held accountable. And ultimately, with MLAs fighting on issues relating to religion and caste and vote banks, the last thing that is there on their minds is to work on city level problems or solving civic issues. That is the root cause of all these problems. Right. And for those who have just joined us on the show, we are getting a lot of responses on YouTube. You can also post your comments and tell us what you think. That's the issue, what you see. Bengaluru, unprepared for monsoon. That we, that's what we are speaking about. Yes, there have been two deaths of Banurekha and Lokesh. Very unfortunate. But this menace carries on year after year after year. This is the story you can repeat every year. And I don't think the people of Bengaluru deserve this. There is a new government in place led by Siddharamaya with DK Shivakumar as Deputy Chief Minister and I hope that they solve this problem sooner rather than later and before I could finish that sentence someone wrote wishful thinking. Thank you very much. That is very encouraging. Let me now go to Sandeep. Sandeep, I want to ask you, you know there are certain small things people in Bengaluru they say, yes, there is a new government in place, Siddharamaya has, you know, taken charge. He went and visited, you know, uh, the girl who passed away, this young techie, uh, Banu Rekha, who works for Infosys. But the thing is, the small, God lies in details, like we say, you know, Sandeep. They say that the forest department does not know what the road infrastructure department is doing. So, forest department, you will say, what is that supposed to do? Well, it is supposed to cut branches of trees because when the storm and hail storm happen, they fall on the road. Then uh, the road infrastructure department, of course, they are supposed to clear the side drains. And the thing is that uh, Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board, that is BWSSB, they have failed apparently to flow the check of sewage into the drains. So, several vulnerable things, no pump sets were deployed to flush out water, you know, ducks on the road were choked with fallen leaves and silt. Look at this, this is not one monolithic mess, these are little, little mess, then it becomes a big kind of a mess. So, I am asking you, is there any which way that there can be proper coordination, elections can happen, but these problems will persist, no? So the, the this problem has been solved three days three decades ago by our parliament. 
they specified it in the 74th amendment they said in the 74th the constitution of india it says very clearly the city should have an autonomous planning authority the problem with bangalore is we don't have a planning authority we haven't had one for the last three decades after it is a law so it is a violation by the state government secondly in the 74th amendment it clearly says the city government should be unified we should not have multiple para states as you rightly mentioned you suppose i have one city government all services are under it and it has to be devolved it has to be decentralized it has to have elections and it has to have a mayor we are not doing any of these for the last 3 years uh, the bjp government found clever excuses for delaying it they drafted a, a bpmp act which they claimed is to implement 74th amendment but it is full of clauses which violate the 74th amendment for one uh, for first thing is it's not autonomous it has a state government in control of it secondly mlas have a role in it mlas are not supposed to have a role in local governance now so what they did is from the back door they ensured the bbmp doesn't have elections they made faulty delimitation exercises all to ensure that there is no election so the mlas can sit in control of those areas and the bbmp doesn't have a role and therefore they can keep Uh, of course dipping into the money flows and also to ensure their own re-election this could also be one of the reasons why those uh, mlas got re-elected because they were using this term when bbmp was uh, corporators did not exist and the council did not exist to ensure that they get re-elected so for selfishness and corruption the the system is not allowed to be set up so we have a systemic problem we don't have a local government we don't have a planning authority now who do you hold responsible when these don't exist these are mandated under law so because our mlas want to continue with their corruption and their selfish uh, uh, targets they are robbing the city of the systemic infrastructure we require the framework that has to exist for the city to be properly planned and properly managed and governed they are not allowing it to happen so until the citizens start demanding that yes we deserve a planning authority we cannot have unplanned growth that we need to have corporators whom we whom we can hold responsible and we need ward committees at every ward and disaster committees at every ward where citizens can play a role directly in their own governance in their own areas in their own so neighborhoods we don't have the tt are you pardon yeah i could yes i can i can absolutely hear you but uh, shrikant uh, you know the thing is that for those you know who live in bengaluru day in and day you, know, you understand policy you understand politics you understand polity as well but for the common citizen who struggles my mother lives in bengaluru and it's a struggle for her she says i can't walk on the streets because particularly when it rains i'm very scared i may break a bone there are several other people who live there and they find it very very difficult tell me shrikan narasimhan what is the way out for them where do they go so that they don't have to face this kind of harassment day in and day out they pay their taxes they you know these are tax paying law abiding citizens but it seems just because it rains life comes to a complete standstill where do they go uh so that you mentioned an interesting point earlier right you said this problem is not a monolith it's actually a bunch of small problems spreading across the city which have combined to become this huge mess that we are seeing today you couldn't have been more right in your assessment uh this is all small problems at the local levels which are all adding up and the solution and this is a concept that we are promoting and propagating through uh, the party that i've started is a concept called as area sabha where citizens work along with the elected representative and ward committee to solve local problems some of uh, uh, the people that i have talked to believe it's an idealistic concept it is not right in front of my apartment way back in 2017 a 17 year old girl had died crossing the road because of a lack of skywalk hmm. and till the time the corporator was in term we couldn't solve that problem and the skywalk despite the project having been approved got mm. stuck in corruption mm. but in 2020 after the term of the bbmp got over when a nodal officer took charge who was playing the role of the corporator who was an ias officer who was a good officer 
the very first ward committee meeting that was held in October 2020. The citizens of the ward, we all sat with them and believe it or not, in two months flat, from October 2020 to December 2020, the skywalk was completed without the interference of the MLA, without a single rupee of bribe having to be paid and we ensured that no more lives were lost due to people having to cross the road at a dangerous junction. It's yeah. just one of many examples that I can draw upon. So the point I'm making is the city and the problems that we are facing, it all boils down to small problems at the local levels, whether it's drains, potholes, exactly. footpaths. Exactly. I, I think walk. so too. Right? So area sabhas are the answer. That's really what we need in the city. We need an elected body, corporators, ward committees, citizens being involved in area sabhas, solving local problems. And I have a very firm conviction that if citizens can work together with elected representatives in every ward through this formal structure, the solution to the city's problems are not very far. So, <clears throat> I've completely run out of time and I'm going to, uh, you know, go round the table as it were. And please be brief. Srikant Narasimhan, do you think election seems to be the only hope now for Bengaluru so that these kind of incidents of Banu Rekha and Lokesh, they do not repeat themselves. I mean, those visuals that you see on your screen is of the Chief Minister Siddharamaya. A lot of hope from, you know, any new government people hope. But do you think the first and only solution is BBMP election, Shrikan Narasimhan? Uh, so, the, I won't go to the extent of saying that the only solution, but it's definitely the first part of it. It's the first step towards the yeah. solution. So, we absolutely need the BBMP elections to be held without any further delay in the next three, four months, I would say. After that, once the council is constituted, once the corporators are elected, uh, we all need to demand transparency. All the accounts, BBMP accounts have not been audited, believe it or not, for more than five years now. 2018 was the last time the BBMP accounts were audited. We need transparency on all the projects. We need citizen participation through area sabhas. And we need to pay clear accountability at right. the local level on what officials. Right. Those you know, are the solutions. For yeah. which the first step is absolutely the BBMP. Right. Sandeep, do you think that is the only solution or rather the first stepping stone as it were to unravel this menace which happens year after year? Sandeep Aniruddin. I agree with everything Srikant said and what you have said also. See, local uh, self-government is the only way to go forward. This is exactly what Gandhiji said. We want Swaraj, not freedom. Swaraj means self-governance and if citizens are not involved in their neighbourhoods, nothing will change. And to enable that, 74th Amendment was legislated, which actually spoke about what committees. And Karnataka, KMC Act and uh, I think other acts talk about the area sabhas also, which are under the ward committees, right. which Srikanth was talking about. These are absolutely essential because, as Srikanth rightly said, uh, under the nodal officers, ward committees have been fairly functional in many wards. The ward where I am living in, in Whitefield Ward, we have been extremely active. We collaborate with uh, civic officials in resolving a lot of issues. Uh, uh, in fact, it, it worked even better than without having a cooperator. But then we want democracy to work. Yes. We need good cooperators and they should become good MLAs or future leaders of our country. And this is the incubation. So without area sabhas and ward committees, we'll just have all these criminals coming into politics. Right. If these happen, citizens will grow into these roles. And secondly, this localization and decentralization is mandated under 74th amendment i think we should all demand that all aspects of 74th amendment be implemented it's three decades overdue without having implemented it is the cause why bengaluru has degenerated into this unplanned growth it's serious time for course correction whichever government is, uh, is there we have to make sure that this is one of the first things they implement for bengaluru and there right. should be no excuse for not doing it anymore Right. Let me go to Vajiullah, who is back with us, my colleague. Vajiullah, tell me something. I am going to ask you something very different, obviously, because you are a journalist and I want to ask you. One of the reasons given, and this is our report, was that, you know, BBMP officials were so busy doing election duty and therefore they had, they just ignored this pre-monsoon preparedness. They were not even prepared for it and therefore this disaster happened. Of course, there are several other reasons as well, you know. But do you think, which means that the BBMP is short-staffed, uh, Vajula? Is that the reason? 
Well, I wouldn't say that the BBMP is short staffed, but then during elections, the election commission uses a lot of government officials for their work. Uh, uh, you have government teachers also deployed in various booths uh, who look after the booth. The election is done by mostly government teachers. You see them in schools in this thing. They handle the booth. You have BBMP workers who, along with the election commission, if you remember, uh, before the election, there was this entire campaign to go out and vote. That was conducted with the help of BBMP itself. So the BBMP officials are involved in the election process also, but that does not mean that the entire BBMP is involved in doing that. You have certain officials who are assigned to certain projects, and then there are officials who are responsible to make sure that the city continues to function. Now what has happened is everybody uses that as an excuse or the, uh, behind that excuse they hide uh, their problems or the laxity of the things that they haven't done. But yes, uh, uh, officials were used. Uh, even when we, if you remember the Kaban Park issue, when the Kaban Park yes. issue happened, we had gone to meet the officer over there, the person who's in charge of the Kaban Park Horticulture Department. He wasn't able to go to court because that his vehicle was taken by uh, the election commission or uh, the political parties for election work is what wow. he told me. And he had to manage to get an auto and get it done. So that is how the situation is. But that does not mean that you uh, divert your attention from the actual issue that you have been placed to solve. You say it so well, Vajula, because I remember, you know, my school teachers, lot of them would be away for election duty. But they would all correct our papers and fail us or pass us because that was their basic duty to do. So I guess multitasking is and this because it recurs every year. I think BBMP either elections are held and a solution is given or else they really need to get their act together. They cannot be so shoddy when it comes to being prepared for the monsoons. Let me thank all of you. Vajula, thank you so much. Shrikant Darasiman, thanks are due to you and also to Sandeep Aniruddhan. But Bengaluru, you stay safe because there are going to be more rains. That's what they are saying.